All right, so we've done the first methodology where we just duplicate these planes and place them on a surface. But the problem with this method is that it works. It's definitely competent, but it's a little slower in some ways. In some ways it's not. It actually has its uses. Sometimes it's faster to do it this way, Like, uh, but we'll get into that in a few minutes. But the problem with this way is that then you get to these pieces, which are just kind of a, an awkward position and hard to see what they're doing. Uh, or how to get them to line up correctly. So we don't want to do that. So my goal is to give you the simplest way to do the more complicated way, which is more about how most of us in production do it, and then go from there. The other thing I'm going to do after this video is show you some ways to get Max to show exactly what it's going to look like in engine a little bit better. My big thing is it's not my production goal. I, I don't work in Max any more than just to build the objects, get everything lined up and then import it into the engine. And then I have to spend a little time in the engine doing what I need to do. But I do understand some people want to see how it works or how you can make it work um, like the engine inside of Max. So I'll probably do a video right after this on uh, setting up your materials so you can make them all look like uh, they're consistent across. Because right now they're not exactly consistent. As you can tell, the shininess doesn't match and then obviously the, the colors don't line up. Uh, so there's ways to do that. It, it just, like I said, it's more complicated. My goal is to go as simple as possible, as complicated as I need to, um, up to the production method I use, and then I can even go a little bit past that, and then we'll go into the engine. I'll show you the simplest modes to get it into the engine, and then I'll show you the more complicated as we go forward. Um, in this case, the engine is going to be Unity, but I'll probably end up doing one for Unreal eventually too, just because of the free ones, and maybe um, some of the other engines that are out there. So let's get into it. So instead of trying to align something up like this, you know, on a plane up here, it would just be a nightmare, right? It would be a horrible nightmare to try and get this lined up. Or this was not not so bad, but still you get the idea. Okay, so anyway, so we take this and we look at this as I don't, you know, how do I do this? It's simple, I'm sure you've already guessed it, I just take parts from here. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll look at my, my piece. Again, it's better if you have um, some kind of uh, some kind of concept or something, and you usually will. Uh, before you start getting into this. Sometimes you, you don't have that option, but in a lot of cases you will. And we look at this and we say, okay, I want to kind of put maybe, mm, I'm going to put this vent type thing in the center under here. So how would I do that? I just go to the poly mode. Oh, one more thing I did dig up that there is no shortcut for it built and rather than have you write one we're just going to do a little trick here go to edit and then type in transform nope we're going to go to transform toolbox and pop it out we're just going to leave this over here for right now but look centers right there activate pivot we can still put the uh, insert button to activate pivot and then we just push center we don't have to go to the secondary menu okay so we're going to take like this one and we're going to grab it and you know, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could grab one and then duplicate it around. But rather than do that, what I like to do is just grab all of them at once, since I have to unwrap them anyway really quick. And this unwrap is not a complicated unwrap by, by any means. But this way, I know they're lined up. So I just take them and I go to the scale menu real quick and I hold Control Shift. So we'll just drag it out a little bit. We don't need it much. We kind of want it the same anyway, like this, and say OK. And so now I've got this separate object. Get out of that sub-object mode and grab this one, and look, I've got all those pieces. So I want to put this grid underneath it. So how would I do that? And this is actually not being very useful right now, but I'll leave it over there. It's not too bad. I'm going to put this, I'm sorry, um, let me find a good one. I kind of like, I don't want the slanted one, though I guess we could. I'll just do this one, simple. Okay, so I come in here and I'm gonna open up my material editor since I still have those three materials. I'm gonna grab the material that I'm using for my decal page and throw it on the object. Right now, you're gonna see it just kinda of goes weird. All right, so we can hide, um, just isolate everything but this, we can see it better, but it's across the whole thing, right? So let's open up the UV Unwrap real quick. We'll say open up UV Unwrap, editor, and then we'll take a look at it and it looks like I missed one doggone it. Anyway, so what we do is we just take them, move them off the side. This is my, you know, quick method for everything. Grab one of them, click on the lighting bulb. 
grab another one, click on the lightning bolt, grab another one, click on the lightning bolt. Why am I doing these all separate? Because I want them to align together in the same area on the object. Meaning that I want them to use the same texture position. So if I take this checker pattern and I go to this, and then I turn this on, I can see my whole, my whole uh, texture for my trim sheet. And all I have to do, and, and some people will just, you know, figure it out from blindly. I like to see what I'm doing so I can get it really nice and clean. Because I'm gonna look at this real quick and I'm gonna say, okay, these aren't quite all lined up. And it's such a slight variation that if I want, I can pull it back. So I'm gonna go to the one. So I go to vertex mode. I'm gonna grab this one and just do this, this, so they're snapped together. Or I could do this, this, and snap them together. And this, this, and snap them together. And this, this, and snap them together. So I have that default, they're all exactly lined up the same. So now all I have to do is scale it down and put it on top of what I want. Don't worry about if it's too big. What you're looking at here is making sure everything that you want to put in there, this this part right here, is, is inside of the box. So everything is inside of the box. So if we look at it over here, they're all inside of the box, just like I want them. They all look pretty good. They're all lined up exactly the same. And the cool thing is if you know it's one works, then all of them work. And then I can do this and close it, collapse it to an old poly, and then um, and isolation and bam it's right there now these are a little bit off so we just need to pull them off so of course it's never easy right it's our job so we pull them off a little bit just a little bit just enough they should be exactly the same we didn't change anything but their UVs and this is what we do for a living I mean we do a little bit of tweaking sometimes there's fast super fast ways to get this done and sometimes it still comes back to us doing a little bit of tweaking and just pulling them in one direction or so if in case you know I don't need to move it too much just enough to get it off that plane and it might have rendered remember I forgot that one that one excuse me and um, we'll pull this out a little bit look at this one it's still a little bit off it doesn't have to be perfect in here okay so in this case what I'll do is I'll just grab this one and We'll do it the old-fashioned way. I'll just drag it over here. Oops, control shift, drag it over here. And change it to elements, because we just want to keep it exactly locked up like it is. And then rotate, oops. Why are you being weirdo? Rotate in the right direction. We just pretty much need to have it. It should be, you know, um, rotated correctly across every plane, but the, the Z plane in this case. So there we go, now we have it. And if we turn this off, we can see that there's these little grids right there. So what about more complicated shapes, you know, across several objects? And that's where this comes in handy. So I'm gonna come back to the front here. I'm gonna say, I want something that straps through this whole piece right here. So I'm gonna get out of this sub-object mode. I'm gonna grab this object again to make sure I know what I have selected. And I'm gonna go, okay, this one's a little bit of a dance, right? But this one's pretty close, meaning that this one's got the diagonal on here. I can definitely remodel them, but the idea is I just try and find the, the simplest solutions. So I get this like this, and I control shift and drag it over here. Basically, oops, I did that wrong. Control shift, drag it over here, make sure it's a separate object in this case. And then I'll get out of that mode, grab that object, and this one I'll just probably move around or maybe I'll symmetry. It'll be a separate object like this. Okay, so I've got that set up. Now I just need to come back into the M, um, material editor, throw this texture on it, and close that up, and go to UV Unwrap. You wanna make sure you put your texture on first, otherwise you'll have to go find it in here, but it'll automatically be here if you have it on before you put the UV Unwrap, and you can show it. And now we can see that uh, somehow I have grabbed Oh, you know what? It's because of the way it was unwrapped. The, okay, so these I want as one object right now. So what's the easiest way to do that? I probably would just see what I can get by doing all of them at once and doing this. And then doing a uh, relax on them. Uh, I like to use this relax tool because I can I know what to expect, but I can just do this and see what it looks like. It looks like there's not much stretching. This is interesting. This is getting nothing here. It's probably just clipping. Okay, so um, we'll just collapse this real quick. 
don't be afraid to collapse your stuff and come back out and do what you need to do. And we'll just, uh, I'm gonna use uh, in the edit poly mode because I don't want to move the pivot point. I like the pivot point where it is because it's based off the object's pivot point. So if I just grab this out a little bit and pull it up so I can see it. Now, go back out of here, go into UV Unwrap, open it back up, show me the texture, and put it on the screen there. And now I just figure out what I want to do. So for me, what am I thinking? Um, you know, I'm not sure, and that's part of the problem with just hacking this together, is that if I have anything I really like on here, but let's just see what we can get. I'll take this, I'll scale it down because we want it to all be a continuous object, and we can try and throw it on top of something like this. And I'm not crazy about it, but you get the idea. I can have this kind of intro thing. We can try this. I don't like this one that I made here because it's too flat to really sell the 3D part of it, but maybe, if we shrink this down, that will work. And we could even get out of the sub-object mode like this and go and do a scale on it itself. Again, I, I think I'm gonna do that, but I wanna do it in the sub-object mode so I can keep my pivot point correct. So I'll go back to editable poly. Yeah, I jump back and forth a lot, especially when I'm just kinda faking it. I'll do this right here, like that. Now, I'm not super crazy about this, so there's ways we can cut it up and make that work, but uh, meaning that I cut it up and this piece is a separate or something, it'd be more of a dance. But again, this is because we're slapping this together. Okay, so... Maybe that's too much. I want it kind of thinner. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll come back in here. We'll go back to UV Unwrap. We'll say open an editor. We'll take it in here. And I'd love to tell you that it's not back and forth like this, but you know, I'm trying to be real with you. It's not, I don't have this pre-planned. I'm doing this like a production. Um, so in this case, if I go back and do the, re, uh, the relax, and you can use the relaxes over, I think this is, um, not that one. Let's, oh, it's, let's peel. Let's explode. Around here somewhere there's a relax. Oh, I think it's these. Yeah, until flat and custom. This is basically relaxed custom. So do this. And now we see that once we move it, it should change what we see. See how it looks like that? So you know, there's a couple ways we can handle it. We could try and play with it and get it just so it's only half. Maybe half works for what we want. Or we could cut it in half and then symmetry it or something. So we get half and then the other half is still over here. So we'd go this direction. But you know, you get the idea. You're gonna play with it. It's not gonna be perfect by any means when we're just, you know, freeing it up here. In fact, I'm just gonna use one of these. Let's see if these work any better. And remember, if it's clipping something else, right now that's fine because you're gonna cut it out, but cut it out inside of uh, Max's, you know, we'll just pull it up. But first the important thing is getting it to where you want it. Now in this case, what I might do is this. So let's uh, that's pretty good, but what we'll do is I will take this and say convert to edible poly, come back in here, grab this edge, and, and we'll just do a uh, connect on it. If you don't, I have a shortcut for it. You can right click and say connect if you want, or you could do, um, jump this down. In the modeling, you could do like swift flip or whatever. I just want it cut in half because I'm going to mirror it across the base. So I'll come back into UV Unwrap. Again, just kind of free making it here. So we're gonna pick the checker pattern, go to here, and we'll take this half, break it, and let's try, we may have to mirror it, but we'll try it this way first. And it should be right there at half. Yeah, so the problem is that it it's not flipped. See how they don't line up even though they do here? 
So what that is, is that the UVs aren't flipped, meaning that, look at this is the highlighted area over here, so we need to flip the UVs in this case. So we'll just do this, come up here to this flip and flip it the other direction. Actually, let me back it up. And then we'll just flip it in the other direction. And then when we drag it up, it should line up perfect. There we go, my brain is not working. Okay, so I have it. I probably need to drag this out a little bit more, hold shift so it's in one direction just to get a little bit better. Um, probably the better way to do that is to drag this up so we aren't stretching that polygon and to drag maybe just, oops, just this polygon and scale it back down so it's better to there. And there we go, now we got that clip. Okay, so take this off, it looks pretty decent. It's not great, it's not perfect again. It's what you get for hacking stuff together or not planning it out too much. But even so, it's a it's an impressively more detailed piece, right? So we'll take this, we'll say, okay, uh, convert to edible poly. The pivot points are the same point, so we can just say symmetry and then we've got two of them. And then if we want, we can say symmetry again and say flip and go to Y and now we've got two in the back. And then if we want, we could um, see symmetry again, I think, and just rotate it in, in the symmetry mode here. Rotate it this direction. No, okay, we won't do it that way. So in this case, we'll just shift and drag a copy of it over here. And then this one, uh, since it's a copy, it's better anyway. So we just come back to the original and set up the the one we want here, R5. Grab this one, drag it out just a little bit because apparently these are a little bit different. And if you want, you can snap them to the surface a little bit better, but I'm just gonna do it by hand because it's just as well for me for speed purposes here. Take this one and put it in. And symmetry turn it back on you'll see all four sides so now we've got all those clips on all four sides now suppose you wanted them smaller well all you have to do is come to one of them and shrink it you know maybe it's faster to shrink it beforehand um, who knows that way you're unwrapping it to one piece but you get the idea is you have full control over how this works and you start to get this kind of cool stuff so now we've got our box in there and you can keep going um, the only thing that you're going to notice and this actually doesn't look bad is that you're not going to be able to get the orange or the yellow color in here like you want like this one right here um, we can do that but that's the next video like i was talking about so we'll get into that later and for now that's how you do it and you get some really complicated shapes um, and able to do what you want.